In today's video, we'll be looking at the London Townhouse Project. It's a gorgeous family home and it's also grade two listed. It's about five storeys tall, so it's absolutely massive. And we had to make quite a few changes to the building to make it work for family life. In part one of the London Townhouse Project, we'll be sharing with you the kids' bedrooms, the principal bedroom, the principal ensuite bathroom, and the dressing room, and sharing some design tips along the way. A child's bedroom is a truly magical space to design. You're creating a stage where hundreds of memories will be created and a haven for a child to grow and dream. It's key to provide them with a space that they feel they can build on and add their own personality to. Whenever I approach the design of a child's bedroom, I want to add considered details that will ease their day-to-day -day life, but above all, create a special space just for them that will make them feel happy and secure. I would say a kid's room is probably the most fun room to design. It's certainly my favourite of all the room types to design. So as much as you want to get it right and you want to make sure that you're designing for future-proofing, the most important thing is that you have fun. There are three main considerations to create a successful child's bedroom. One, longevity. Two, personalisation. And three, practicality. With longevity, you're trying to create a room for a child that's going to last them for a good 15 years, so it needs to be able to adapt and grow with them. How I do this is creating a neutral base. As you've seen in here, all the main pieces like the headboard, the wallpaper are all very neutral. And then I've added more fun elements through the cushions on the bed, the artwork and the frames. My top go-to place for artwork and frames is Etsy, but another great way to make it more personal is frame some of the child's art and by the time you've added a mount and a nice frame, you can make it look really special. Your environment is so important and no area in the home is more important to your well-being than your bedroom. It's where you go to rest and restore at the end of the day. We know it affects your mood being in a beautiful, well-designed space. You instinctively feel it. The space just works and the room will feel comfortable and calming. If you're lucky enough to get a good night's sleep, you're going to spend about a third of your life in bed. So my top tip is to really prioritise comfort when it comes to your budget. Invest in a good quality mattress and good quality bed sheets. We have a bed linen range with Coase Linen and not only are they great quality, but you can also monogram them and personalise them to you. So you can put your initials on the side of them, which is a really nice touch to match it in with the colours of your interiors. In any bedroom you need to have a focal point and often in our projects we'll make this the headboard wall. So the way that you can do that is you could either have an oversized headboard which is a really nice design feature or you could go for a statement wallpaper on this wall or even just hang some mirrors or art above your bedside tables. Just make sure that you're really thinking about this wall because naturally as you walk into the room this is the elevation you're going to be paying most attention to. One of the most important pieces of furniture in your bedroom is probably the bedside table. It's where you're going to put your table lamps, it's where you put your glass of water, your clock and maybe a book for bedtime reading. So it needs to have quite a lot of surface area. One of my tricks I use when I'm designing a smaller bedroom that doesn't have room for a very wide bedside table is I'll try and use ones that are quite deep, around 60 centimetres, and that's going to give you a lot more surface area to work with. I also tend to favour bedside tables that have drawers, so you've got some hidden storage to put all your messy bits away. A bathroom should be a serene spa-like space. When I design any bathroom, I want to create a calming room that feels clean and inviting. I would say the most important thing in a bathroom is storage. You really can't have a tidy bathroom if you don't have enough room to put everything away. Normally when we're designing a bathroom, we'll put storage above the vanity, so what looks like a mirror is actually a cupboard that opens up, and that's great for storing things like your toothbrush and your products. And then we'll also have additional storage under the vanity unit with a drawer front that pulls out, and that's great for extra storage for larger items. In terms of your budget, bathrooms are quite an expensive room to design and you certainly don't want to redesign them in a few years time. So I would say really prioritise your hardware, like your taps, your shower mixer. You really get what you pay for and if you get a good quality one it will last you for years. But if you go for a slightly cheaper one and it breaks down it's really hard to change later without damaging your tiles. 
In terms of materials themselves, I do prefer to use real marble and I tend to go for really large slabs that you can then book match. It looks really dramatic and beautiful. But if your budget doesn't stretch to slabs of marble, there's some great suppliers that do smaller tiles of real marble, like mandarin stone that can look really effective. Or you can also get some porcelain tiles that look like faux marble. And again, they can come in quite large formats and you can even book match them so they look really effective as well. A dressing room is such an indulgent and special room. It's a space where you can retreat from the world and get ready for the day or a special event. I wanted to create a glamorous space for our equally elegant client. It was a room she had dreamt of for years. She wanted an unapologetically feminine space with a soft palette of dusty pinks, a complete departure from the rest of the house. If you're lucky enough to have a dressing room and it really is such a luxury, my advice to you would be plan ahead in terms of what kind of storage you need. Really think about do you want to prioritise hanging space or drawers or shelves. Most of our clients prefer hanging space. I would say it maintains your clothes slightly better and it's a lot more efficient in terms of storage. Plus with shelves, when you pull one thing out, everything kind of falls out with it. One of my other tips for storage is if you're storing shoes, put them on an angled shelf because you'll fit a lot more shoes in that way. And often in our projects, we'll put them on a pull-out shelf so you can double up the storage of shoes and you get twice as many in. With lighting in your dressing room, if you're able to put some lighting in your wardrobes, it makes such a difference in terms of seeing what you have in there and is really practical. In terms of aesthetic lighting, I like to have spotlights in the dressing room. And don't ever think about what it looks like on the floor plan. Always think about what the light's gonna hit. So in a dressing room, it's good to have the spotlight between each pair of wardrobe doors, and that will look really effective and dramatic when they're switched on. Dressing rooms obviously have a lot of joinery and generally that means quite a lot of hard finishes. So we really like to mix up the finishes on the wardrobe doors to make that feel a bit softer and a bit more warm. Um, often we'll use wall coverings or fabrics on the wardrobe doors as well as mirror and timber and that creates a really nice look. And then we also put mirrors on the inside of the wardrobe doors just on one pair and what that allows you to do is angle the mirrors and you can see all the angles of your outfit before you go out for the day. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more behind the scenes, more tips and tricks, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.